why is my art not selling? That's probably the biggest lament that I hear from aspiring artists. Um, a recent survey in the US of full-time artists showed that 80% made less than $10,000 per year on the sale of their art and half of those made less than $5,000 per year. So the stereotype of the starving artist is alive and well, and most artists have a lot of trouble with selling their work. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why your art is probably not selling. But before we get into that, you could do me a big favor. You could press on that um, subscribe button. And if you like my content, you want to see more, then you could also give me a big thumbs up. Okay, so why is your art not selling? Well, it's more than likely one of two things. Um, it has to do with either the price of your work in relation to the value or it has to do with exposure. And then there's actually another thing that might come up and I'll get to that a little later, something that happened to me that, that resulted in a slowdown in sales in a particular gallery. But again, I'm assuming some of you have seen some of my other videos, but in case you haven't, um, the thing you need to understand is that your art has a value and that is how much the public um, is willing to spend on your work. And over time, when you get your work before a lot of people, it will shake out to a certain level and you need to recognize what that level is. And then when it comes to pricing your work, it's very, very important that you have your work priced just below the value. Because if you have it priced above the value, you'll likely have no sales. If you have it priced at the value, you may have some sales. And if you have it priced below the value, you should have a lot of sales. So the very first thing to look at is if you're getting your work out there and you're actually getting it seen by the public and they're not buying, um, then there's a very good chance that you have your work priced higher than what the public is willing to pay for it. Now, if that's the situation, you have two options. If you want to just keep producing the same type of work, the only way you're really going to get sales is to lower your prices. Now that will work in the short term in, in terms of actually moving your work out and, and getting some sales, but it's not a really effective strategy in terms of a career as an artist. A better solution is to work to improve the quality of your work so that you will raise the perceived value. As you raise the quality of your work, so that's by increasing your skills, increasing your conceptual knowledge, things like composition, spending time in process mode, really pushing your creativity and experimenting um, and learning new things. As you continue to do that, you should see an increase in the quality of your work, which will increase the value that the public sets on it, which will also then allow, will cause your work to sell more and eventually will allow you to keep increasing your prices. Now, the other main element is exposure. First of all, before people can buy your work, they have to see it, right? So if your work is not being seen by a lot of people, then that might in fact be the reason why you're not selling. Um, and this pandemic has been a perfect example of that. Like most galleries have had to close. So if you were an artist that relied heavily on in-person sales of your work in galleries, then I'm sure you've seen a huge downturn in the number of sales that you've got since the COVID pandemic began. Um, on the other hand, online sales have actually gone up um across the board now luckily for me i actually had made a, a big transition kind of away from galleries and more dealing direct to clients um, and in particular with online sales before the pandemic hit um, so my exposure to the clients has gone up a lot and our sales have actually gone up but again, if your work is not being seen, then that's going to result in a downturn in sales. And anything that results in less people able to see your work, that's going to result in, again, less work selling. Now, there's a couple other specific scenarios that might account for why your work's not selling. Um, so let's take, for example, the, the, the situation of say you're at an art festival and other artists work is selling, but yours is not. If your work is in the same sort of price point um, as the other artists work, then it's a pricing issue. The public values their work more than yours, at least at that price point. 
Um, so then the only option is if you want to sell in that venue is the short term is lower your prices. But again, the long term strategy is to improve the quality of your work. But there's another scenario that might occur where a lot of other artists are selling. But if in general, all of the other work that's there is at a much lower price point than yours, then it might just be that the people at that festival can't afford the price point your work is at. And then the solution is to get your work in front of an audience that can actually afford that. So if you then if you get it to a higher level festival where we're more experienced and um, more expensive artists are, then you can gauge the reaction. And if artists are selling at a similar price point to yours and you're not selling, then you know, OK, your work is priced above the value. Now, you might be at a festival where nobody's selling anything. Um, that's just a bad festival with a bad audience. So taking into consideration the, the audience's reaction to your work and sales, that really is only valid if some people are selling. So as I said, if nobody's selling, then it's not a reflection at all on your work or other artists' work. It's just a bad audience. So I wouldn't do that festival again. Now, there's also another specific scenario, one that happened to me um, that that might happen to you, too, where all of a sudden in a specific gallery, my sales went way down. So I was used to selling, you know, four or five, six paintings a month. Uh, and over the course of a couple months, I had no sales. Um, and I thought, well, that's kind of curious because I know for that audience that they really like my work and they value it. What I ended up finding out was that the gallery had taken on another artist who did work that was very similar to mine. And in fact, I think sort of copied my style a little bit. But this artist was much earlier on in their journey. So their prices were quite a bit cheaper. So people would look at my work and go, oh, I love that piece. And maybe my piece would be $6,000. But there'd be this other artist's work that was kind of in a similar vein, not quite as good as mine. And obviously his career wasn't advanced as mine, but the piece would, would sell for half as much money for $3,000. And what I'm sure people were doing was looking at that and saying, well, I like, I like Tim Packer's work more, but I don't like it twice as much. So they were going with the cheaper artist's work. Now, I've actually had that happen to my benefit as well. Um, one of my galleries, Gallery on the Lake, had a show of Norvell Morisot's work, who's an Indigenous artist in Canada um, who passed away a number of years ago, but his, whose work commands incredible prices from like $25,000 up to $200,000. But his, his work is nothing like mine, except that it's very bright and colorful and very, very, very strong on composition and design. And when the Norvell Morriso show was on, my sales went through the roof. And I think I had the similar type of a benefit. People were coming there who were prepared to spend twenty-five dollars to $100,000 on a piece of art. And they might, in fact, have bought one of his. But when they looked at mine and they went, wow, I like that a lot too. And it's like, you know, but it's so much cheaper than a Norvell more. So it was almost as an afterthought, you know, they'd buy a piece of mine for five or six or $7,000. So that type of thing can also impact why your work. Um, and that would be more in terms of if you've had steady sales in a particular place and all of a sudden your sales go down, I would look at what's going on around you. So just to kind of uh, wrap this up here, if, if you kind of have never had good Good sales, then I would say you want to look at the price of your work compared to the public's value. And you also want to check to see, are you actually getting your work out there in front of people? Are you getting exposure? If you experience a sudden downturn in sales, then I would look to see what might have caused that. So again, look at what other artists are there. Maybe there's been some new artists brought in who are competing with you, but they have a lower price point. I also had a gallery once where they just had construction happening on the street in front of them for a couple months. So their traffic went way, way down. If you have yet to experience kind of solid sales of your work, then again, you're not going to like the answer or the solution, but it is that your work is priced too high. Um, and that doesn't mean that your prices can't eventually get to a very high number indeed. It just means that for whatever what you're producing right now, the public 
does not value it as much as you are charging for it. Now, if you are really interested in, in selling your work and learning more about that, I have a full webinar, an hour and a half, uh, with the 10 keys that I believe are essential that you need to know if you want to be successful in selling your work. So I will stick a, um, a link underneath here in the comments that you can click on to go to that, or you can just go to www.aspiringartist.ca and that'll take you right to the webinar page and you can just sign in and watch the webinar. I also have some other videos coming up, uh, specifically one on how the public comes about determining the value of your work and another one on what you can do to increase the value of your work. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Tim Packer. I'll see you next time.